we have seen three concrete examples of divide and conquer algorithms. We saw the problem of counting inversions, then we saw the problem of finding the closest pair of points, and then we looked at integer multiplication, which was Karat Subha's algorithm. So let us look at a more general property of how to solve or analyze these divide and conquer problems. So remember that a divide and conquer solution requires us to break up the problem into disjoint sub parts. Right? So, we break it up into smaller sub problems which do not interact with each other, solve them recursively and then we combine these sub parts. So, what we then have is that the complexity of the original problem which had an input size n will now be a recurrence because it will depend on the complexity of smaller sub problems which we get from dividing up the problem and then the cost of splitting it and combining it which will be an extra cost. So, right at the beginning without calling it divide and conquer, we saw this at work when we looked at searching and sorting namely binary search and merge sort. So, for binary search what we said was that each successive iteration halves the interval to search. So, to search an interval of size n, we look at the midpoint and then we search either the left half of the right half. So, we get t of n requires me to search half the interval and I need to examine that midpoint. So, assuming that it is an array and I can get the midpoint by just some index calculation, in constant time I can do that comparison and decide which half to sort to search and if I expand this out then I get log n. Right? So, this was uh, binary search and for merge sort remember that we had to recursively sort the two halves and then we merge them using a linear time merge operation. So, it was 2 times t n by 2 plus n and again by just some expansion we get order n log n. So, both of these uh, were relatively easy to solve by this naive method of just repeatedly substituting and finding a pattern and kind of replacing the whole uh, expression by something which uh, encompass the whole calculation. Now, when we looked at integer multiplication, this problem became a little messy because these terms became a little more complicated. So, for the naive divide and conquer we had 4 times t n by 2, right. So, notice that we have here 2 and 2, so that in, in some sense helps us uh, manage the thing a little better, but here we have 4 and 2 and 3 and 2 for Karat Subha's algorithm and then we ended up with completely different analyses, right. So, we ended up saying that the naive algorithm will take us back to n squared and Karat Subha's algorithm actually gives us a very strange quantity which is n to the power log 3, n to the 1.59. So, the question now we are going to look at is whether there is some uniform way to get from this recurrence to this asymptotic value, right. Is there a way to kind of easily calculate what the answer should be without having to actually go brute force through that uh, long expansion and, and making sure we combine the terms cleverly and recognize the pattern. So, for this we will use a representation of our divide and conquer solution using something called a recursion tree. So, a recursion tree is just a rooted tree, it is a tree in the sense that we have been looking at binary trees and so on, but this will be not binary, it will have many children for each node. So, it will be a rooted tree and the property that we have is when we are doing divide and conquer we are creating sub problems, right. So, the problem at the top creates say two sub problems and each of those creates two more sub problems until we reach at the bottom at the leaf level a sub problem which is trivial of size 1, right. So, each node in this tree will represent one sub problem, right. So, each recursive sub problem is, appears in the tree and it is a child of the problem that created it. Now, we are going to kind of add up the cost of the algorithm by associating the cost with each of the sub problems and what is the cost we are going to associate? We are going to associate the cost that we spend in that sub problem without counting the recursive call because the recursive call will be added up in the nodes below it, right. So, we are not going to count the cost of making the recursive call, but the cost of doing the splitting and combining. So, that is really the cost we have record with each node. So, how much time does it take us to split the, the, the problem and how much time will does it take us to combine the answers assuming that the recursive problem has been solved. So, this is the value of each node, it is the cost excluding the recursive calls. So, concretely if we have an input of size n, right, we will have to spend some function of n on non-recursive work usually we have seen that this is normally order n like we have to for example, in quick sort we have to partition it into lower and upper that is also divide and conquer or in, in any uh, or we have to merge in merge sort that is the combination is order n. In rare cases like in binary search this work is order 1, we just have to find the midpoint, right. So, that is 
one of the case. So, f n is some function of n. Now, having done that, we split it up into some number of recursive calls. So, in Karatsuba's algorithm, we made three recursive calls. In the naive multiplication algorithm, we made four recursive calls. In merge sort and binary search, we make two recursive calls. Right? So, this number of recursive calls is on some smaller part of the input, which is some fraction of the input. So, this is some n by c. Now, usually we have been seeing that these two things are correlated because in binary search, for example, we made, okay, in merge sort, we made two recursive calls. So, r is equal to 2 and c was equal to 2 because we did it on size n by 2, right? So, this is merge sort. But in binary search, r is equal to 1 and c is equal to 2. We make one recursive call on half the length. And in Karatsuba's thing, for example, r is equal to 3 and c is equal to we make three recursive calls to the multiplication, each of them on a number of half the length. Right? So, these two parameters r and c are independent in some sense. The number of times we have, number of sub problems we have to solve and the size of each sub problem. Because the sub problems are not really directly, you know, it is not like we are overlapping. So, in, in sorting or something, it makes, it looks strange. How can we take half the array and sort it three times? Because there are only two halves. But we saw that in multiplication, we are actually multiplying three different quantities of half the size. They are not directly contributing to the answer. The answer is some combi clever combination of these. So, that is why we can have more sub problems than there are uh, the size of the parts. So, if we do this, obviously the recurrence that we get is that to solve a problem of size n, we have to break it up into size of uh, problems of size n by c. And how many of them? Well, r of them because that is our assumption. And then we are spending, this is the non-recursive part, we are spending f of n time in doing the splitting and combining. Right? So, if assuming that this gets solved, then the cost that this node has to incur on its own is f of n. So, if we now try to draw this recursion tree that we said for where each node represents a sub-problem, at the root of the tree we have the original problem. Right? And the original problem to break it up takes f of n work. So, we will label it with f of n as the cost of this thing, right? And then this will have r children, right? So, the root will have r children because I am splitting it up, right? And each of them will represent the cost of doing the problem on input size n by c, right? And finally, at the bottom, we will have the leaves. So, if we go down d steps, right? Then the size of the sub problem has been divided by c d times. So, I have come down to n by c to the d. So, the cost of that level is going to be f of n by c to the d, right? And just to make things work nicely, we are going to assume that this goes down to 1. So, eventually c to the d will become n. So, c is actually uh, some power of n, okay? So, n is actually some power of c. So, here is a pictorial representation of this tree. Okay, so, this glorious tree has our root with labeled f n, right? Then at level 1, okay, we have r nodes and each of them has the cost associated with 1 by c of the original input. Now, if I go to level 2, I have each of these r nodes splits into r nodes again. So, I have r squared nodes. So, so each r node splits into this set of r square r nodes. So, there are r into r, r square nodes and all. And each of them has a complexity of n by c again divided by c. So, n by c square. Right? And finally, when I reach the base of the tree, right? when I come down to 1, right? so let capital L be the number of levels in this tree. At the bottom, I have r to the power l because each time I have been increasing the number by a factor of r. So, r, r square, r cube. So, r to the power l nodes and each of them will have this cost. Right? So, this is the picture that you should have in mind about this recursion tree. And what we are going to say is that the cost, this t of n that we are trying to calculate is actually just, you just have to add up all these things. So, how do we, we will see what it means, right? So, we just have to add up all of these things. So, this is the contribution of each sub problem to the overall cost. So, the leaves correspond to the base case, right? So, this is t of 1, right? So, t of 1 is some constant. So, it could be 5, it could be 1, it could be 10. 
but it doesn't really matter because we are doing asymptotic complexity. So, we can just assume that that constant will get absorbed in our big O notation. So, we will always assume that the base case T of 1 is 1. Now, we could actually have a base case which is not 1. We might stop the thing at some smaller thing. For example, supposing we are trying to sort something, we might actually at some brute force way sort 3 elements. So, we might actually stop short of 1, but it, in general we will go down to 1. Right? So, the base case is n equal to 1 and the cost of n equal to 1 is typically 1. Right? So, that is a safe assumption. So, remember that the ith level has r to the i nodes each with value f n by c to the i. Right? That is the, this is the size of the input at that stage and f of that is the amount of non-recursive work we do per node and we have r to the i nodes because that is how many times the tree has split. So, overall since we assume that the original n was a power of c and we are dividing it into n by c, n by c, n by c after log to the base c of n splits we have come down to size 1. So, we have reached the leaf where we have this case of the base case. So, the capital L which is the number of levels in our tree is just log n to the base c. So, now if we want to add up as we said we wanted to add up all these nodes right. So, we have to add if you add it up level by level then we start from the 0th level which is the root down to the leaf level which is the last level right. At each level this is what we said right. We have r to the i nodes and each of them has value f of n by c to the i. So, we just multiply that. So, r to the i times f of n by c to the i and add this up for all i from 0 to l. So, this is the total cost t of n expressed in this level by level framework. So, in particular the number of leaves is r to the l right. So, r to the l so, remember that L is log c to the base n. So, r to the L times f of 1 because that is where the n has become 1. So, f of 1 we remember is always 1 and r to the L is just r to the log c of n because that is what we have for capital L. That is the height of this tree which has got c branching. But remember our earlier observation that a to the log c is the same as c to the log a for any base. So, if I have r to the log n, it is the same as n to the log r to the base c. So, I switch this around and I will get that the total cost at the leaf level, if I add up the cost at the leaf level, it is going to be n to the log r base c. So, <coughs> so this is what we have, we have log c, log n levels, the last level has n to the log r and the total cost is this level by level cost. So, what we are going to do is we are going to think of this as a series, right. So, this is a cost of level 0 plus the cost of level 1 plus the cost of level 2 plus the cost of level n. Right? So, the question is what is happening to this cost as we go from left to right. So, there are three cases that normally arise in a divide and conquer scenario. The first case is that every term is a constant factor smaller than the previous term. Now, this is what happens in binary search. We start with the full thing, the next level only examines half, the next level only examines half of that. Right? In such a case, what happens is that the root dominates the cost. Right? So, the root dominates the cost means the whole thing is basically f of n. Now, if the terms are equal, that is the sum of the costs at level i plus 1 is equal to the cost of the parent of that thing. right? Then what happens is that the cost across all the levels is the same. So, the, the total cost across level 0 is the same as the total cost across level 1 is the same as the total cost across level uh, L, right. So, I will, so we just need, so the total cost is always going to add up to f of n, right. So, we just take f of, f of n times the number of levels. Now, the number of levels we said was log c of n, but if you are doing asymptotic complexity log c, log 2 are all the same. So, I can just get f of n times log n. So, if I have all terms in the sequence have are of roughly equal size, then I get the cost of one node times the number of levels which is log n. And finally, if the thing is actually exploding and this is what is happening in certainly it is happening in uh, uh, the naive multiplication that we did because we said I go from n to 4 times n by 2, right. So, if I look at the number of problems I am solving. Right, I am solving 4 into n by 2, so I am really solving double the number of problems in terms of bits. Even in Karatsuba, I am doing 3 times n by 2, so that is more than n. Right, So, the number of sub problems is actually exploding as I go down and it is kind of growing exponentially. 
and in such cases it turns out that it is the leaf sum which dominates. So, when it is shrinking it is the root sum which dominates, when it is increasing it is the leaf sum that dominates and the leaf remember is this one, right. So, in such cases I get n to the log r and this is what we got for Karat super. So, let us just look at some examples to understand. So, let us look at merge sort, right. So, in merge sort I have n, this is a recursion tree, I have n, n by 2. So, n by 2 plus n is n by 2 is n, n by 4 plus n by 4 is n by 2. So, this is a situ situation where the series is equal in the sense that the total contribution at each level is adding up to n. So, therefore, I get n times log n, right, just by applying that uh, uh, analysis that we did previously. Now, we saw quicksort in the worst case gives us n squared, but what if we had a kind of clever quicksort? So, remember in quicksort, I have n elements. So, if I had sorted it, then it would be in ascending order. So, what if I pick a pivot which is always somewhere inside the center segment? So, let us say that it is between n by 3 and 2 n by 3. So, the pivot is always here, okay. How we get that is a separate story, but let us assume that we had a magical way of picking a pivot whose value was always between the, the one-third value and the two-thirds value. It is never in the smallest one-third of the list, it is never in the highest one-third of the list. So, then in the worst case, it will split this as 1 by 3 and 2 by 3, right. So, the worst case recurrence, if I have this clever pivot, is t of n is t of n by 3 plus 2 times t of n by 3, right, because I have to now solve uh, the other th thing twice. So, sorry, this will be 2 n by 3, I think, right. So, this is now something different from what we saw before, because in our earlier thing we said you have to do n by c, n by c, n by c, and we have two unequal splits. So, here is the recurrence, right. So, I have one node which has n by 3 and then I have the other node which is 2 n by 3. So, what will happen is that the right hand side will go deeper and the left hand side will run out of elements faster because this, if I go down this path, then it is dividing by 3 every point. And if I go down this part, it is multiplying by 2 thirds. So, the right hand most path in this tree is going to be longer than the left hand most. So, I will have holes in the tree. So, it actually does not matter in that recursion tree analysis, you could have holes. What you are really interested in is the depth, the longest path, right. So, the longest path is going to be now what happens in this two thirds thing. So, it is going to be I am dividing by two thirds multiple times and I will get it end up saying that I have log to the base 3 by 2 of n which is just log of n, okay. Now, again if you look at each level n by 3 plus 2 n by 3 is equal to n, this whole thing is going to be equal to n and so on. So, actually if you add it up this is an equal series, so we get n log n. So, what it says is that if you are able, able to actually ensure that quick sort gives you partitions which are at a fixed percentage, it could be one third, one fourth, whatever, you will actually end up with an n log n algorithm. The problem with n squared is because you have this algorithm which gives you 1 and n minus 1, right. So, if you have a pivot which is very bad, then you get n squared. What about Karat Subha? Well, uh, the first naive multiplication says I take 4 sub problems of size n by 2 and I keep expanding them. Now, this is again an exploding situation now because I am going from something which adds up to n to something which adds up to 2n. So, in this case I have to look at the base and so the base is n to the log, remember I have to do n to the log r, right. So, r is 4, so I have n to the log 4, but log of 4 is 2, right, so I get n squared. So, in other words that n squared that we derived by manually calculating, you actually get by just plugging in 4 in this n to the log r. And for Karat Subha, we manually calculated, but we got n to the log 3, we get n to the log 3 here also because now r is 3, right. So, it is n to the log r with r is 3, right. So, these are just examples to show that now if you have this recursion tree idea and you know you can kind of look at your recurrence and decide whether it is increasing or decreasing or stable, then you can directly read off the answer to the recurrence without having to manually expand and calculate it as we did before. So, there are other versions of this calculation which are sometimes called the master theorem for recursion, but it is useful to have this at the back of your mind. You can always validate it by working it out for yourself, but if it is very clear to you how it is going to work by looking at the recurrence, you can just write off the recurrence, the asymptotic complexity without having to do the calculation. So, to conclude, I would just like to thank uh, Jeff Erickson for publishing this wonderful book in which these pictures are there which I could borrow. Thank you.